In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Moved by deep sorrow to our very souls, O God, for our guilt weighs upon us, sins are bent us down. Unto thy throne of mercy we ever humbly trod, filled with great pain and sorrow, heirs of the sins of Cain. Vainly we sought of this world fruitless consolation, vainly we search for comfort remission of our sins. For there never is true peace where there are transgressions, neither is there happiness without God in conscience. Being therefore overwhelmed by our misery, O God, when our guilt weighs upon us, sins are bending us down. So at thy throne of mercy, our knees we humbly bend, filled with great pain and sorrow, heirs of the sins of Cain. May the Lord be in your hearts and on your lips, that you may worthily confess your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O merciful God, I thank you that you did not summon me out of this world burdened with sin, but that you have called upon me to repent and amend my life. Assist me, O God, in the performance of this important task, that my confession may truly be the means of cleansing myself of sin and the beginning of a new spiritual life. Before you, I desire to make a confession of all my sins, but I realize that I am unable to do this of myself. Therefore, I invoke your divine help. O Holy Spirit, enlighten my mind with heavenly light, that I may perceive all my sins. Refresh my memory that I may recall all my transgressions. Kindle in my heart a true contrition that I may sorrow sincerely over my sins and confess them with deep humility before my God, my confessor, and my church. And now, my brothers and sisters, please make an examination of conscience. Awaken in your heart a deep sense of sorrow. Resolve sincerely to amend your life. Repair any injury done to others. And thus, through a worthy confession, your sins will be forgiven. And now I ask that you recite after me the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Blessed Trinity, who by His Holy Spirit permeates the universe, but above all, the soul of man. I confess before him and his holy church all the sins that I have committed in thought, word, and deed. I confess that by my sins I have severed the ties uniting me with my Creator. I have disobeyed his holy laws. I have wandered from the path of righteousness and thus brought injury to myself and to my neighbor by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, moved to the depths of my soul because of my many offenses. I am heartily sorry. I firmly resolve to amend my life and with your help, O oh God, I earnestly desire to follow the road of life shown me by Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Forgive me, O merciful God, pardon me my sins, and you, Reverend Father, grant me absolution. My dear brothers and sisters, for your penance. For the next three nights, besides offering prayer, to search your heart and ask that you may be blessed with the birth of Christ within you, to be renewed by the power of Christ. And now, if you are truly sorry for offending God, I ask that you strike your breast three times 
saying, God, have mercy on me, a sinner, and I will grant you the absolution. May the Almighty God be merciful unto you, grant you remission of your sins, and lead you unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, absolution, and remission of your sins. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the merits of the Blessed Mother Mary and all the saints, show you the way to eternal life. Remember this sacred moment in your life. Go in peace and sin no more. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Peace, light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Last Sunday we lit the candle of joy. We light it again along with the candles of hope, peace, to remind us that Jesus, born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and bring all of us hope, peace, and joy. Wayne, if you would like the first three. Today we light the fourth candle of Advent, the candle of love. When the angel Gabriel told Mary that a special child would be born to her, she was filled with the love of God. She sang a song that began with the words, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Just as the birth of Jesus great, gave great love to his mother, so his presence in the world gives love to all those who would come to know him. He heals and gives all hope, peace, joy, and love when they come to believe in him. From hope, peace, and joy, love is experienced. We light the candle of love today to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have love and that through him we have life. Love is like a burning light that shines in a dark place. As we look upon this candle, let us celebrate the love that God has for each of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank for the love you give us. We ask that as we wait for all your promises to come true and for Christ to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your love with each other. We ask it in the name of the one 
who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Thank you. This morning, um, our organist will not be with us, and so we will be celebrating the contemporary rite of our mass service booklets. Wayne, could you just kind of remind me the page? 63. Thank you so much. Thank you. To thee we come, O Lord our God, before thy altar. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you filled your servant Elizabeth with your Holy Spirit as she greeted the mother of our Lord. Fill us now with your grace that we too may rejoice in your salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Cheryl, would you please proclaim the word?
first reading is a reading from the book of Micah, the prophet. Thus says the Lord, you, Bethlehem, Euphrates, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth is born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord, his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. He shall be peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth. The second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, As is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offspring of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. You too must be patient. Make your hearts firm, because the coming of the Lord is at hand. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled, the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. 
Nie będzie pochowany Jezus Chrystus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Words taken from the Gospel of John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Think for a moment the importance of this scripture passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. On this, the fourth Sunday of Advent, we lit the fourth candle of Advent, symbolizing love. Over the past three weeks, we lit candles of our Advent wreath that represented hope, peace, and joy, three great pillars of Christianity. Today, we reflect on the fourth pillar of Christianity, that being love. You know, there is no greater love or no greater power than love. For it has been said that love conquers all. Even the Beatles wrote a song entitled, All You Need Is Love. And in the lyrics we find that nothing is impossible as lo long as you have love. There have been millions of words written speaking of love. A simple definition is that love is an intense feeling of deep affection. You know, when you find love, you cling to that power of love. For it changes, it transforms, and it makes a person better. You know, I would teach kid, I would teach children in catechism two words in the beginning, physical and spiritual. I explained that love can be experienced in life by the five senses. But true love is not experienced, but rather felt. Although the heart is not directly associated with the power of love, there have been countless writings that says that love comes from the heart. While I am no expert on the subject of love, I'd like to share with you two Christian writers who wrote of love. They were St. Paul and St. John. In the 13th chapter of the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, Paul speaks of love. He writes, If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I am only like a resounding gong or a clanking cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can phantom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do, have, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to the hardships of life, 
that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You know, Paul says that without love one is empty, one is nothing, and one gains nothing in life. The second writer, St. John Beloved, wrote in his first letter of love. He says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and had sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to have love one for another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, in just these six scripture passages, love is mentioned 13 times. Today's gospel brings us to know the depth of God's love, God's love. It is found in a young virgin named Mary, who was righteous unto the Lord. She loved God, and God chose this love from her to choose her to bear his only begotten. My dear brothers and sisters, if but for a moment you can reflect upon the meaning of love, that God had for Mary. If you can reflect for a moment the love that God has for each of us by sending his Son to bring the gift of eternal life, you will all, we will all, come closer to understand that spiritual love that comes from within. It is a gift that God placed inside of each of us, for it comes from him. It is in the good news of Jesus that we see love manifested. That birth that took place that night in Bethlehem was given out of love, and through our willingness to follow the Lord in our lives, we become perfected in love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Mary, 
and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Please be seated. On this day, my dear brothers and sisters, we offer prayers of intention. And the response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray this day for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, those who will die this day alone. Let us also pray for the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for our sick and ill brothers and sisters, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, also especially for the young children who are suffering from the RSV. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day to give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and healthcare workers who strive daily to help others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. In our prayers this day, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals, and all victims of violence, both here and abroad, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day and give God our thanks for the blessings of all those who serve in our armed forces, who strive daily to bring forth freedom and democracy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray this day for the Polish National Catholic Church, its bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray this day for our parish, Holy Name of Jesus, and for all the parishes, and for all those who proclaim the Word of God to those who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray this day for one another, for our families and our friends and our neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh Lord God, we ask that you accept our prayers this day, and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, come forth upon all of us. Amen. Let us pray. I see him, though not now. I behold him, though not near. A star shall advance from Jacob, and a staff shall rise from Israel. Blessed are you, Lord God Almighty, and God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, may become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this wine and water, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
Through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands may be for us our spiritual drink. O Lord God, we ask that you receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you this day with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless the sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your most holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all my sins. Receive this offering, most holy Trinity, which we make in the memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may they whose memories we honor here on earth intercede for us in heaven. Through the same Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, you showed the world the splendor of your glory in the coming of your Son, born of the Virgin Mary. May we worthily offer this holy sacrifice and celebrate the mystery of God made man. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We live to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you revealed your goodness and a unending love. Sharing in the hope of the patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah within our very hearts. Therefore, we join this day with the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. This morning, let us turn to page 82 and offer the Eucharistic prayer number two, which is the canon of St. Hippolytus. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your word, of your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He re was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you.
In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth, so that we might praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor, honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. And now let us turn to page 95. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father. In the words our Savior gave us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. in the blood of Christ, the bread, which we break. Is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And now let us greet one another with a sign of peace. Peace be unto you. And now, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray together the first communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teachings and never let me be parted from you. 
we will take the bread of heaven and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are you if you truly seek righteousness, for you shall be filled. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. 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 Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. She and Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. O sacred banquet, memorial of the Last Supper, in which our Savior gives himself to be food for mankind, and in the deepest truth unites himself with them. Here our prayers have been sent this day to thy majesty, that as many of us shall receive from the sacred altar, the body and blood of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen.
Lord, may we possess with pure hearts that which we have taken as food. And may the gifts we have received this day bring us healing and strength now and forever. Amen. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, most gracious Father, the mystery of your eternal word took flesh on earth when the Virgin Mary placed her life in your service, through this Eucharist may we receive the Spirit to help us prepare for his coming in truth, faith, and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Peace and blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you, my brothers and sisters, and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth and proclaim that indeed the Lord is coming into our world. Thank you, Jesus God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be for all the world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our loved departed ones. Eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.